Hello, I'm Steve Birick, the virtual facilitator here at Rumi. We're going to do an upskilling session on writing captivating bite intros. We'll learn some strategies to make the most out of these short but impactful bite intros so that we can deliver learning value right from the get go as soon as someone clicks on a bite. So, why don't we take a look at what a captivating bite intro does? And taking a step back, let's consider what a captivating bite intro doesn't do. First of all, Despite the name, it doesn't actually introduce the bite. Learners have already come across an introduction through a link that they saw on their social media, or maybe a friend shared it with them in their inbox, or maybe they were just on the Rumi site and they saw a cool bite headline and they thought, ooh, I want to learn this. So they've already been introduced to the bite. It also doesn't really introduce the learning objective because the learning objective is kind of right there in the bite title. So what does a captivating bite intro do? Well, it should tell learners what's in it for me. They should be able to know from the introduction why it's important that they're learning what they're learning. What can they do in real life with this bite? It should really unlock the learning value of the bite so that it gives them a reason to scroll on to the next step. So what gets in the way of a captivating bite intro? Signposting. Signposting is any kind of language that tells people what they're about to learn. So stuff like, here are five tips that, read on to learn more about, in this bite you will. Now it's a natural inclination we have to signpost because of the learning experiences that we've had in the past. Going all the way back to our grade school days, our teachers used to tell us at the beginning of the day, we're gonna learn this, this, and this today. And that kind of translates to modern day e-learning modules. And they always say, in this unit, you will learn this. We want to move away from that convention because bytes are different. Bytes are short. We've only got a few minutes to really capture the attention and understanding of a learner. So when we signpost, we're really repeating info that might already be in the bite title. We're giving them information that doesn't really deliver the what's in it for me, or as I like to call it, whip them. So it really just takes up space that could be devoted to language that actually tells them why they're learning what they're learning and gives them, like I said before, a reason to scroll on or to read on or check out these tips that you're offering them. So a strategy for writing captivating intros is the hook, the line, and the sinker, right? You often hear when someone has been convinced about something or maybe someone agreed to a deal, you can say, we got them hook, line, and sinker. Basically, we caught their attention, we reeled them in, and we sealed the deal. It's kind of a sales job when you're doing the intro. So I want you to remember that hook, line, and sinker. We'll look at how that strategy actually works. And we'll look at some examples of some recent bites that I think have really good hook, line, and sinker strategies. So first of all, with the hook, ding, let's get them right into the bites. You can ask them a question. You can give them an interesting fact or a figure. You can get them involved in a story or scenario, right? So that hook can be a really great first line of a scenario. The fact or the figure could be some kind of compelling information that they can relate to or something that they didn't know, or really a question that they might have in their own heads. All of those things are fair game. And now with the line, we want to pull them closer. So we want to give them more details or give them some further background info that might help them understand a little bit more about the learning objective and why it's important. And then finally, the sinker, unlock that learning value, give them a reason to keep reading, give them an aha moment, make them think, huh, I never thought of that before. Or just straight up tell them the with them, the what's in it for me. Learning this learning objective will allow you to do X, Y, and Z in real life. A lot of bites are based around strategies. So you can give them a quick sinker on the outline of the strategy. What's kind of the main point or main advice of the strategy? Or there's nothing wrong with asking another question that the bite will then attempt to answer. So let's look at a few examples of what I find are really excellent hook, line, and sinker intros. So starting with uh, a bite from Kitsy, this one is from a bite about Robert's rules of order. Robert's rules of order are really about using parliamentary procedure in business and work meetings so that there isn't chaos around the meeting process. So to introduce this bite, we got Kitsy's fantastic hook here. 
Have you ever been in meetings that last forever and nothing gets done? Everybody can relate to that, I think. So our line, there's a better way. Ooh, I'm interested in that. I don't want chaos in my meetings. I want things to get done, but how do I do that? Bang, the sinker. Use parliamentary procedure to have more efficient and fair meetings. So there we go. We have some very specific learning values in this sinker. Efficient and fair meetings. It tells the learner what they can do with Robert's Rules of Order, with parliamentary procedure. It doesn't tell them what they're going to read. It doesn't tell them how many ways that they can use parliamentary procedure. It tells them the value of parliamentary procedure. So to me, that is an excellent sinker. Here's another one called, how do I set boundaries with my partner from Chantal? So let's take a look at the hook. Worried that setting personal boundaries might harm your relationship? I think most people would think that because when we think of relationships, we don't think of boundaries. We think of connectedness, togetherness, sharing, right? So with the line, maybe you think establishing boundaries might destroy intimacy, aggravate tensions, and even get you ghosted. Or maybe you think setting boundaries isn't necessary, right? So Chantal's put in some really good background information that people can relate to here. Bam, the sinker. You are very much mistaken. Boundaries help set expectations and limits around how you want to be treated. Aha, uh -huh. I've never thought of it that way. Having boundaries is a sign of a healthy relationship. They allow you to feel safe, respected, and fulfilled. That's what I need in my relationship. So you can see how the aha moment can really motivate the learner to continue reading the bike. Next, this is from Adriana, four strategies to help you find a balance between your part-time job and schoolwork. So we got a really cool fact and figure for the hook here. At least 50% of students will have a job during their post-secondary education. That's quite staggering. You know, as someone who had a job during my years in university, I didn't realize that there were so many students like me who were working. I thought it was just me and a couple of other people. So with the line, chances are that you'll have to balance being a full-time student with part time work at some point, And that's no easy task. It certainly isn't. But with the sinker, no worries. Time management strategies will help you find your groove. So here we've got a nice, pithy, one sentence explanation of what the strategies are. They are time management strategies. So now the learner's going, oh, okay, time management. That's what I need. And they're ready to continue on to read the bike. Here's one more. This is from our job interview series. Please correct me in Slack if I pronounce your name incorrectly. This is Kit Way with a fantastic bite. How to answer what's the most important thing you learned in school. So we've got the hook that we all recognize. You're at a job interview and it's going quite well. Suddenly they ask, what's the most important thing you learned at school? It can be an overwhelming question. Almost oh, certainly. I feel overwhelmed. I can relate to that. I'm getting drawn into this bite already. Hang on, breathe, you got this. All the knowledge, skills, and experience you learned, what's the best info to share that will help you get the job? Ah, we got a question here. Now I'm thinking, yeah, really, what is the best info to share? And so I'm gonna continue reading on the bike to find out that info. So we've seen some examples. Here's some advice on how to write captivating bite intros. Give learners a reason to read on. Don't just tell them what's gonna happen next. Tell them why they should continue reading. Really unlock that bite's learning value. What can learners do in real life with this information? It's something you're gonna answer in more detail as you go through the bite, but if it's right there in the get-go, in the introduction, it's gonna motivate the learner to continue reading on and really just connect that learning objective to relevant needs in real life. So. Take action, your next steps. Use the hook, line, and sinker in your next bite intro. And you know, you can go through our bite library, take a look at some bites that interest you, see if they use the hook, line, and sinker strategy and try to apply it to your next bite based on some of those examples for inspiration. You can also share this video when peer reviewing. Maybe not everybody's gonna see this video or attend the workshop. And also there's gonna be a flood of, of new learning designers every few months who need this information when they're creating their bites and you can help them out as a learning design volunteer when you're doing peer reviewing. So feel free to share this and really any other Rumi learning resources we use with upskilling sessions to help your fellow learning designers create excellent bites. And you can join 
Rumi Discord community for part two of this session. So I look forward to seeing all of you at this session. As a reminder, the Rumi community is available on Discord, so you can join us for events and hang out in the text channels. This event will be hosted on the Discord channel. Look forward to seeing you there, and best of luck with your bite intros.